Hello and good day, I'm Molly and this is Rocket Boom. Let me make a prediction about your weekend. If you throw a ping pong ball into a beer, it will be into a red solo cup. Or if someone screams the word Jägernook at you, that Jägernook will also be served in a solo cup. Or if you simply attend a rowdy house party, there will be solo cups. What is a solo cup, you ask? Why, it's the little red party girl on everyone's guest list. And really, who doesn't have a crazy story that begins with one? <sighs> I was so hungry once I ate a whole jar of mayonnaise. <laughs> the whole thing? Yeah, I oh. opened it a whole thing. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, Look at this, there's a spider in my cup. Oh no, that's just the hair. <laughs> so the bailiff was in the courtroom, was like, uh-uh, no eating in the courtroom. Get out of here. So I took the mayonnaise with me and I had to eat it outside. It was kind of hot out there. You had to. Yeah. That was crazy. But what story does the Red Solo Cup have to tell? In honor of the weekend, we say, tell us, little friend. In the 1940s, an Illinois businessman named Leo J. Hulsman invented the first automatic paper cup machine. It was capable of pumping out 250 cups in a minute. Cups that were shaped like a cone or perhaps a dunce cap for a grapefruit. World War II was raging and with manpower and glass in high demand, the little cup was popular with bottled water distributors. Hulsman named his invention the Solo Cup and shortly after that he renamed his company for the creation. The Solo Cup Company was born. The cup maker followed the original Solo with a new piece of disposable drinkware for every decade. In the 1950s, it was a wax-lined cup for cold sodas. These were popular with movie theaters. In the 60s, it was the cozy cup. These were popular with coffee drinkers who didn't like washing mugs. And in the 70s, it was Hulsman's masterpiece, the red plastic cup. It has been lost to history how the Red Solo Cup became the party's vessel of choice, and the company cannot even name its precise birth year. But soon it was a staple of the frat house and beach house and ale house. The cup was cheap to buy, sturdy enough to survive hours of heavy use, then easily discarded. This made the Solo a crucial piece for several popular drinking games. The Red Cup has seemingly become, as one Facebook fan page says, the trademark of drunk college kids everywhere. Or, as another puts it, the unrecognized patron of the good times. In 2006, the Solo Cup company posted $2.4 billion in sales, with a boost from its campus customers. But after all those good times, an economic hangover was looming. In 2004, Solo bought its nemesis, the cupmaker Sweetheart. The sale made Solo a major provider of disposable kitchenware, with customers that included Starbucks and McDonald's. However, the company struggled with debt after the Sweetheart deal and was hit with claims it was poorly run. In 2007, the Holzman family relinquished control of the company to a group of investors, ending 70 years of family leadership. Though the story of the Red Solo Cup shall not end there, because for all time, wherever Southern comfort is mixed with Diet Pepsi, or wherever a girl wearing Ugg boots dumps an icy cocktail down the front of your pants, there too will the legacy of Leo J. Holzman live on. And next Friday, we'll tell the story of the Blue Solo Cup. Wait, no, we won't do that because no one uses the blue ones. Seriously.